Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm live from uh, Connecticut. Um, welcome. Um, today's discussion is going to be on thyroid hormone. So um, we're going to get started here in a couple minutes. Just... Hi, Natalie. Hi, Helen. Nice to see you, Helen. I haven't seen you in a long time. I miss you guys. Hi, Judy. All my former patients are here. Miss everybody so much. Hi, Liz. Nice to see you all. Good morning. Beautiful uh, Saturday morning. Hey, Sal. Frank Bruno. All uh, really wonderful people that I haven't seen in a long time. So, Morning coffee, black, right? Intermittent fasting, we'll go through that. Hey, Ant, what's up? Glad you could get on here. Um, so we're going to be talking about thyroid hormone. So thyroid hormone is the um, master, is one of the master hormones of the body. The reason I, I, I say that is because it's produced um, by the pituitary and uh, well, the releasing hormone is produced by the pituitary, which I'm going to get into. And the um, it controls so many things in the body, right? It controls your heart rate, it controls your temperature, it controls um, it can control your mood, it controls your metabolism, um, it controls hair growth, it controls skin turgor. So this is a major, major gland that uh, really affects many things, and. Um, so when you have a disorder of the thyroid, you can imagine the havoc that this wreaks on the body. So um, I'm just going to see who else we have here. Great to see everybody. Hey, G, Marissa, uh, Devin, Carol, Al. Hey, everybody. How's everybody doing? So um, let's talk a little bit about how hormones work, especially pituitary hormones. I think I mentioned this before on some other talks that um, the, the way your hormones work is kind of like the thermostat and your boiler in your house works, right? So the pituitary gland, I want you to think of the pituitary gland as the thermostat. And the gland itself, the thyroid gland, which sits right here in your neck, right here. And when we examine the thyroid, you could actually see it's right in this area, right? So if somebody has a large thyroid, we could almost feel it with our hands. So... Um, the thyroid gland is now the boiler, right? So let's think of it like that. Let's use that example. Um, the thyroid um, gland is induced to produce hormone by the pituitary. So the pituitary gland, which sits in your brain, produces thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH. And I'm sure a lot of you who have thyroid disease know what TSH is, right? So the TSH is kind of a way we, we, um, we regulate or measure how much, how well your thyroid is doing. So let's say there's enough thyroid uh, hormone and your thyroid is working fine. So you have enough circulating thyroid hormone, right? So what happens? When you have enough thi circulating thyroid hormone, the thermostat is sent a signal that there's enough thyroid hormone, right? It's sent, there's enough heat. So what happens? The thermostat sends a signal to stop producing heat, right? And that's how your house works and that's how your, your body works. So your pituitary is the master gland that controls uh, the, the thyroid hormone and also controls many others like growth hormone and testosterone and estrogen and all the other hormones are controlled by these pituitary uh, stimulating hormones. So now what happens if there's not enough thyroid hormone? If there's not enough thyroid hormone, the thermostat clicks on, right, pituitary, and produces thyroid-stimulating hormone and makes your body produce more hormone. So now thyroid disease comes from a breakdown in any process. So let's talk about the process that has to happen in order for you to have uh, your thyroid functioning properly. So your pituitary has to be working properly, right? You have to produce thyroid stimulating hormone. Then your thyroid hormone has to be working correctly. Your thyroid has to be free of disease or nodules or any other uh, disorders, structural abnormalities, um, uh, like a, a benign tumor in the thyroid, anything. Uh, there's other um, 
uh, if you had your thyroid irradiated, for example, right? If you had Graves' disease and your thyroid was uh, treated with radiation, your thyroid is not going to function properly. So now your pituitary has to work. Your thyroid has to produce now T4. T4, there's two thyroid hormones. This is the most important thing that I'm going to say. There's two thyroid hormones. There's T4 and there's T3. Um, your thyroid produces mostly T4 and some T3, very little. Your body needs to convert T4 to T3. Now, T4 and T3, all that is is the amount of iodine molecules that are around, surrounded by the thyroid hormone. That's why iodine is so important. We used to add iodine to salt because people didn't get enough iodine. Um, so we have iodized salt now. And a lot of supplements now contain um, uh, iodine as well. So you basically, you cleave one thyro one iodine molecule off of T4 and it becomes T3. Now T3, listen closely to all the people who are on Synthroid and not feeling well. T3 is the active form of thyroid hormone in your body. It's the one that actually produces the effects on the glands, so on all of the systems in your body. So now your body produces T4. Right at the, at the tissue level, T4 gets converted to T3. Now you have thyroid receptors all over your body, in your brain, in your heart, right, in your lung, everywhere. The thyroid hormone now circulates through your bloodstream and hits its target. So getting back to where there could be issues, so there could be issues in production from the pituitary, there could be issues in production from the gland itself. Then there could be conversion issues, and these conversion issues, some people do not convert T4 to T3 efficiently. And a lot of it is an environmental, a lot of it's by what you're eating. It seems that people who eat a lot of processed foods often have issues with uh, conversion. And then there could be also a problem at the receptor, which is also overlooked, right? Um, so there's so many different processes that could go wrong. And and the, the problem with that I'm seeing with most people who are, are thyroid patients is your doctors are just looking at TSH. And they're saying, well, all right, if there's not enough hormone, TSH is going to go up. And if there's too, too much hormone, TSH is going to go down. And yeah, that's helpful, but it doesn't tell you the whole story. What happens if you're not converting efficiently? Your TSH may be normal, right? Your TSH is going to be in the normal range. Your T4 is going to be normal. Your doctors are normally attending free T4 and TSH. And when we say free Free means that some hormone is actually bound to a protein in your blood. And if it's bound to a protein, it can't get to the receptor, right? Because it's already occupied. It's bound to something. So we're only concerned with the uh, free circulating hormone in the body. So if you don't convert efficiently, then that's another issue that you can have. And then the, the final issue, which is the hardest to diagnose and is very rare, is if you're having a problem on the receptor level. So where you know everything's getting converted right, but the T3 is not working at the receptor for some reason. And again, that's kind of a process of trial and error that you have to uh, um, really figure out. Hi, Sam. Can't wait to see you today. Um, so this is really where most people run into um, issues. So let's talk about this a little. So most people, they go and they go to their doctor and they get their routine blood tests. And I think that probably starting at the age of 25 to 20 to 30, around that age, you should probably get your thyroid checked as routine blood work. So ask your doctor, to send you for a thyroid test. So now here's the problem now. You're gonna get sent uh, for a screening test, you're gonna set for a free T4 and TSH, which is fine as a screening test. But if you're having symptoms of hypothyroidism, which actually are difficult to um, pinpoint because uh, the uh, deficiency in thyroid uh, overlaps a lot of other um, problems in your body. For example, you could be uh, thyroid issues. Your skin is dry. Uh, you're tired. Uh, you're not sleeping well. Your heartbeat could be a little bit low. Uh, you feel sluggish all the time, but so many things could cause you to be sluggish and not feel well and not sleep well. So, you know, you have this index of suspicion as a doctor and you um, basically will just screen for thyroid. You may see some vitamin levels and kind of 
try to figure it out. But here's the problem. And, and I, I almost never see it checked. You have to have to get three tests done. Well, actually there's, there's others, but the three major tests are free T3, free T3. Doctors will order reverse T3, they'll order T3. It has to be free T3 because we want to know the actual level of active circulating free thyroid hormone because that is what tells you exactly how much thyroid hormone is in your body. So free T3, free T4, and TSH. That'll give you a general idea of how your thyroid is functioning. I also now also send um, thyroid uh, antibody tests because if uh, anybody on here has Hashimoto's, you'll know that um, what happens is in some cases, your body will produce antibodies against your own thyroid. So that kind of binds now to the thyroid, your thyroid circulating around, and then this, this substance binds to it, right? An antibody. So that's what Hashimoto's is. So Hashimoto's is where you have antibody that binds to your thyroid and renders it inactive, right? And, and it causes all kinds of havoc. So the problem with uh, Hashimoto's is that um, your levels of antibody will fluctuate. So it's very hard to regulate medication on, on uh, Hashimoto's. And um, a big thing with Hashimoto's, and if you are a Hashimoto's patient and you, and, and you like to work with me, um, there's a lot of things you could do nutritionally to um, augment thyroid function. There's a lot of things that you need to avoid if you have Hashimoto's, like especially processed foods. So if you have Hashimoto's, you have this circulating home, uh, um, antibody that causes now another issue. So you can see how complex this is. So it's not as simple as just order a TSH. If your TSH is great, then you don't need more or less hormone, everything's perfect, your pituitary is smarter than you are, and that's the theory in medicine. So um, I wholeheartedly disagree. I think that you need to have uh, a complete picture of uh, what's going on. You need to know how much you're producing, how you're converting, how your receptors are working, and if you have any active antibody in your system. So I'm hoping that this is making a lot of sense to people. Um, so one of the things that uh, I did commonly uh, in my practice is uh, I would use either a compounded thyroid um, extract, which is usually made from bovine or porcine, which is pig or cow thyroid. So it's actually made from the thyroid of an animal. Um, maybe sound a little gross, but um, it's actually the, the reason this is great is because it's the same hormone that your body produces. So it's almost bioidentical to the hormone that your body produces. So this is very important because it's going to be assimilated into your body very easily. And it's in a perfect ratio of T3 to T4 that your body should be, should have circulating there, right? So, uh, and this is especially good if you're not converting because if you're taking Synthroid, which is synthetic thyroid, which is fine. You can take thyroid, but Synthroid is T4 only. So if you're taking Synthroid and, and you're not producing enough hormone, great, it works great, right? You'll monitor your TSH, your doctor will monitor your levels every six weeks or so, and hopefully you get better. But then there's a percentage of people in it, and it seems like it's actually a lot more than um, is actually going getting noticed that people start thyroid, and if people are on here that are on thyroid hormone, they can attest to this. Um, if you're on thyroid hormone and you start Synthroid, you start feeling better, you start feeling better, and then all of a sudden you hit a plateau. And now all of a sudden, I feel better, but I'm not 100%. I know I'm not 100%. And then you go to your doctor and the doctor says, TSH is fine. There's nothing wrong with your thyroid. It's gotta be something else. Get more sleep or get more exercise, right? Problem is, is uh, you may not be converting from T4 to T3. So this is the most important thing that I want people today in, in this in this uh, discussion to really understand is that you have to have the whole picture. So if you're taking now synth, uh, Synthroid, you're only getting T4. If you take Armour Thyroid, which is uh, commercially available, FDA uh, approved drug, which is also made from cow um, thyroid gland and is bioidentical, um, or you can take Synthroid, right? The other choice is you could take Synthroid and you could take another synthetic hormone 
which is T3 called Cytomel, and there are others, but that's the most popular one. And you can kind of try to balance those two. So that becomes very difficult. Um, uh, you have to be very careful with T3 because it is the active form. So if you give a little too much, uh, you can get racy heart and palpitations and feel sweaty. So it's very difficult to adjust. But uh, I have a fair amount of people that I, uh, I do treat with the two separate because they can't get thyroid or they have an allergy or sometimes even if they're vegan, right? They don't want to use a, 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 something that comes from an animal. So we will use uh, Synthroid and Cytomel. So, um, hey, Joe, Joe Cangelosi, Joe Fro, longtime friend, the best. I, I miss you, buddy. And uh, Anthony Garofalo, I'm seeing so many of uh, Nelson. Really great to see everybody here. Um, we got people tuning in from Puerto Rico, Melanie. Um, so really excited um, to see everybody here. So um, getting back to the discussion. So now, what do you do? Well, like I said, there's some things that you could do nutritionally to kind of improve your conversion. One thing, the first thing would be to uh, avoid processed foods. So processed foods, anything that has more than two ingredients is a processed food, right? So like a banana, for example, the only ingredient is a banana, right? Beans, the ingredient is beans, uh, steak, same thing. So when something, but look at a Ritz cracker or, or you know, a granola bar and there's a million other uh, ingredients in there that some which you can't pronounce and so that's processed right it's got preservatives and it's got it's got things in it that help it have a longer shelf life so all these things are not really good for you plastics aluminum um, all the things that we're uh, exposed to in the environment just think of it like for example what a, look at think of all the chemicals that are in hair dye right if you color your hair women out there um, and, and, you know, you're putting a dye that has a lot of chemicals in, right into your scalp. Nail polish, right? You put nail polish, you have a smell nail polish, right? And you're putting it right here in your cuticle, right? Right, in, right where it can get into your bloodstream. So there's so many, you know, chemicals that we're exposed to. So you want to try to live as chemical free as possible. You want to eat well. You want to exercise. These can all help conversion. But if you're not converting still and you still have symptoms, you need, you need, you need, you need to have your doctor get a free T3 level, right? And um, if your doctor doesn't agree, if your doctor says you're TSH, then honestly, you should really find a new doctor um, because you have to have a doctor that's willing to listen to you, that's willing to listen to your symptoms and really pay attention to, uh, you know, what's going on in your body because, you know, one thing I, I say is that there's nobody that knows your own body more than you, right? And if there's something wrong, you know, the doctor's there to be kind of a detective and figure it out, but you're the one that is detecting that there's something wrong. So um, it's very important that, uh, you know, you have a good line of communication, a doctor who's willing to work with you. So um, let's talk a little bit about Hashimoto's now because that kind of can throw a monkey wrench in all of this. So now you have free T3, you have free T4, you have TSH, you have all this information and now you have, uh, there's these two antibodies, thyroglobulin and anti-thyroid um, hormone, right? So basically they're two hormones that will bind to two molecules that will bind antibodies to the thyroid hormone or to the thyroid gland itself and cause it not to function. This is an autoimmune disease, right? So like lupus or other autoimmune diseases you've heard of. And autoimmune diseases have to do with uh, regulation of uh, your immune system, obviously. And your immune system is, um, is regulated mostly in your gut. So 80% of your immune system function is, is in your gut. So that's why nutrition is so important when you're when you're a thyroid patient or if you want to have a, th a healthy thyroid it's so important to eat well because your digestive health and your gut health will directly uh, affect your antibodies and your immune system so now if you have an overactive immune system you have these thyroid antibodies it becomes more challenging so there's no way to kind of like adjust your medication on the fly. So some days you have higher antibody levels than others. So some days you feel great and some days you feel sluggish again. So the best way to, to approach this is to really just, you know, eat, eat the way 
the best way you can, you want to get on probiotics. Um, you want to have good digestive health. You want to take prebiotics, which are um, amino acids and other, uh, other substances that actually create a, a healthy environment for the probiotics or the good bacteria. Um, again, stay away from processed foods. Exercise also helps. But when you have autoimmune disease, these levels are going to fluctuate. So the best way I know to do that is to avoid uh, your immune system from being overactive. And the way you do that is by treating your gut health. So that addresses that. Um, what if you, uh, what if you now, you know, you're feeling tired, you're, let's say in your 40s or in your 50s, you're feeling tired, your hair is not growing as thick, you're, you're losing the lateral, here's another one, you're losing the lateral one third of your eyebrows. That's another, um, another sign of subtle sign of thyroid disease. Uh, your skin is dry. Um, you have difficulty waking up in the morning. How do we distinguish whether this is thyroid or this is something else? Like you could have growth hormone deficiency, you could have estrogen deficiency, you could have testosterone deficiency, you could have Lyme disease, you could have chronic fatigue syndrome. How do we figure out if this is the thyroid? Well, the only way to really know for sure is to get the right test and get a complete panel. Because if you get, if you have symptoms of thyroid and you go to the doctor and you just get a TSH test and a free T4 and the doctor tells you that your thyroid is completely normal, it may not be normal because you didn't get the whole picture and now you're back to square one and you're looking for other things. So when somebody uh, consults with me about fatigue, one of the first things I ask for are uh, thyroid um, levels. I get free T3, free T4, TSH, and thyroid antibodies. So that's the panel you want to get. And then we could distinguish whether you have Graves' disease, whether it's just idiopathic, which means we don't know, um, what, um, thyroid disease, um, or something else, right? We could have, you could have a, a something, a tumor of some, even if it's benign on your thyroid gland, which is why examining the thyroid is, is important. And, you know, you have to get this whole picture together of what's wrong. Um, so I can't stress enough that you really need to communicate with your doctor, you need to work with your doctor, if you're not feeling well on your thyroid hormone, get that free T3 level checked, right? And and make sure that you're converting efficiently. Um, there are pharmacies, in fact, I just had a discussion the other day, I'll give a plug to Delco Drugs right in Staten Island. Uh, Rob, the pharmacist, has been compounding now for uh, probably 20 years. Um, he can compound thyroid hormone for you, um, identical to uh, Armour, because Armour, believe it or not, Armour thyroid uh, a lot of times runs out or the insurance doesn't pay for it. I noticed Helen said that. Um, you know what? Uh, sometimes, you know, they're not going to pay for it because they want you to be on Synthroid. You, ha you can fight it. I suggest fighting it. But um, you may have to pay for it because it's where your health is, you know, you can't put a price on your health and it's, it is a generic drug. You know, the compounded drug will be a little bit more expensive, but again, you know it's coming from a pure source. You know how much, what your ratio is. Um, if you can work with a good compounding pharmacist, they can help you as well. So that's important. Um, and I can't stress enough how you have to also check the other hormones. Uh, I'll give you an example, like growth hormone, also a pituitary hormone. It's funny because growth hormone is one of the few actual hormones that the pituitary produces. It also produces oxytocin, which is the drug that causes contractions during um, labor and also has to do with breastfeeding. And then vasopressin, which is uh, deals with your blood pressure. But other than those two, which are really minor role-playing hormones, uh, the pituitary's main hormone is actually growth hormone. So first thing you want to do is make sure your growth hormone levels are good. And uh, that could be measured by uh, in the bloodstream by IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor 1. Uh, also, growth hormone gets produced in by the pituitary gland. It goes down to your, um, it goes down to your liver and gets converted to insulin-like uh, growth factor. And that's what has the effect on the body. So you could actually indirectly measure growth hormone by measuring IGF-1. Um, so, um, and then there are also uh, homeopathic um, thyroid preparations that, uh, or, or things that will help boost your thyroid hormone. One of them is iodine, right? So taking enough iodine in your diet. If you're like me and you use Himalayan salt and you don't use table salt, you don't have the iodine that's put in, in uh, commercial 
table salt. Now there's probably enough if you're eating out, going out to eat every once in a while. Uh, you, as you know, they cook with more than enough salt. So there's a lot of salt on uh, the food already. But uh, in general, if you're not eating a lot of salt or you're on a low salt diet, you should be supplementing iodine. Um, uh, like I, uh, I've mentioned in my other talks, I don't really talk about specific products, but I do, um, there are products out there that uh, are homeopathic that do actually stimulate um, your thyroid to function better. There's there's a lot of uh, thyroid support supplements out there, and if you have, uh, if you inbox me or if you consult with me, um, I could recommend these to you. But um, there's so many different things that you can take to augment this. So um, it's it's important to really work with somebody like I do right now. I'm health coaching. I'm doing nutrition, so I work with people over the phone and through the internet and. and, and um, like, like this type of venue, FaceTime or a Zoom, which is a new technology. Um, and, you know, I will not only recommend what you should be eating, but also what blood tests you should have, you know, what, what things you should avoid, what chemicals should you be avoiding in your foods, what is the environment that you're in, what, what, what are the chemicals that you're exposed to. So those, these are the types of things that myself and other health coaches will uh, work with you on. But the most, one of the most important things is getting the proper blood tests. So um, one thing I'll do is I'll write FREE T3 in all caps, FREE T4, TSH, and then I'll underline the T3 because the tech sometimes will automatically just order FREE T4 and TSH and then you never get the test done. How many people out there um, thought they we're supposed to get a free T3 and free T4 and TSH, and they just get the free T4 and TSH because the lab can't find the code or whatever. I'll write the code out sometimes just to make sure you get the right test. So, you know, there are some challenges out there, but once you get that information, you know, bring it to your doctor, talk to them about it. If you have a health coach or somebody that you're working with, talk to them about it because it's, it's so important to get your thyroid regulated. Um, it, it, again, it controls all the, all the different aspects of your of your life, from energy level to sleep to immune function to heart rate. So all of these things are so important. So if you're if you're missing the boat and you're not getting the proper uh, testing, your your doctor really can not, not have a whole picture of how your body is functioning. So um, really, that's um, that's the main thing. Now there are disorders, I, I, and I know um, Donna Joe asked me, reached out to me uh, the other day and said that she had Graves' disease and my mom also had Graves' disease. So Graves' disease is also an autoimmune disease, but it, it's where you make your thyroid produce too much thyroid hormone. So what happens with that is um, most of the time you end up getting your thyroid either irradiated or removed completely. Now what happens? You automatically go on Synthroid. You, you have to. Your thyroid was taken out. You no longer can produce thyroid on your hormone on your own. So now you're relying on your pituitary. Now what happens? You go on thyroid, you feel great, you're feeling fine, and then all of a sudden you get the symptoms again. Doctor raises the thyroid, the synthroid. Then your TSH goes down. Well, you're on enough thyroid hormone. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know why you're tired. Well, the reason you could be tired is that you're not converting now efficiently from T4 to T3. Again, get your T3 test checked and, uh, and then then you'll see the picture. Now, if T3, free T3, and free T4, and TSH are normal, I can almost 100% tell you that you don't have a thyroid disorder. There are, there's maybe less than 1% of the cases where they now have a receptor problem. I'm not gonna get into that too much, but again, that would be very clear cut where they have very clear cut um, thyroid symptoms, but normal labs. And that's like really less, I've seen only a few, handful of cases. So for the most part, if you get those tests done, you're gonna know what's going on with your thyroid. Um, once again, uh, Dr. Richard Lucente, I have a Facebook page, Dr. Lucente. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. I have a Pinterest page, I'm on Instagram. Um, if anybody has any questions now, it would be a good time to shoot it out. I'm gonna give maybe a couple of minutes to see if we get any questions. Hi, BB, nice to see you on here. We got, we got people from all over the country joining us today, so um, it's great to see you all. Uh, so anybody have any questions regarding your thyroid? 
um, and I don't get to them, please feel free to inbox me. I'm always happy to help as much as I can. Um, but I would, uh, I would love to uh, work with you individually if you uh, have the time and, and, and would and like to work with me. Um, my, my clients are really doing well with their thyroid regulation. Um, okay, so here's a question. Does menopause, menopause affect your thyroid? Uh, yes, Chris, um, it can. Your, um, when you go through menopause, it seems that there's also, uh, as you know, and menopause is basically the lack of estrogen and progesterone from, um, from basically uh, running out of eggs, right? So you have a certain amount of eggs, and then when you stop ovulating, um, you, you're not, no longer producing your progesterone. Your, your estrogen levels start to drop and uh, you get all of these symptoms. So the first thing I look at is, is the pituitary, right? I want to make sure the pituitary is functioning. Um, growth hormone um, can, can definitely cause menopausal symptoms. So you want to check pituitary function, and then you want to get FSH, LH tested. So these are all other pituitary hormones. But yes, um, when you're in menopause, it seems that there's more of an issue with your pituitary I think I, th I see a lot of pituitary under functioning and a lot of adrenal under functioning in menopause. So it will affect, uh, it can affect thyroid. It, it would be a good idea when you get your, um, your estrogen and progesterone levels checked to also get um, IGF-1 for your growth hormone levels or, and also um, you want to um, get your, uh, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone levels checked as well. So you got to get a, a complete panel and then you would know. All right. I don't see any other questions. I really thank everybody for their support. Um, I will see you next Saturday for uh, Saturday morning coffee. And uh, it was great seeing everybody out over here. And um, there will be a replay that you could pull up on my page of this. So if you have friends that are suffering from thyroid disease and um, want to get a little information, um, you can show them this video. Thanks, everybody. Have a great, great Saturday.